Welcome back. We are on the home stretch now. It's Nigeria Diamond in the Rough on our 60th Independence Anniversary. I was talking about the poll that we took earlier on, looking at the different sectors um, down there. We, we wanted to find out which of these sectors has performed better over the years. And it's interestingly, top on that is agriculture. We have 12.71% of people who feel agriculture has performed pretty good um, security, like we said, 1.27%. But look at the energy sector, power, 0.85%. So certainly power is on the minds of, of many Nigerians. Um, in terms of humanitarian affairs as well, we have 1.69%. Uh, that's how many people think that's going great. And a little bit better for transportation, 7.2%. So overall, more can be done. Bloody. The, that's the uh, that's like the mantra uh, uh, of yeah. this anniversary. More can be done. More should be done. Mm -hmm. And as if what we hear is correct, more will be done. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at this point, uh, let's talk to those for whom this is important. Uh, many of those who talk uh, uh, at this time are those who, quote and unquote, have had their time, and there are others whose time it is now uh, in the sun. Uh, so we decided to call this segment Progress, the people who are going to lead the country from here onwards. The progressive creatives. Thank Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so we're being joined first uh, here in the studios uh, by a familiar face. Uh, he's, I think, COVID. Uh, COVID-19 has made him grow a beard. So he's not quite, <laughs> he's not quite as uh, recognizable as he would Some otherwise Some call it a lo been. lockdown beard, yes? Uh, been yes. Out. Indeed. Very so... Uh, Mr. Kulia Folayo, of course, is a film producer. He's a director. He's also an actor. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank on you this very day. much. And happy anniversary. Thank you. And happy birthday. Thank yesterday, you. Yes, yes Thank indeed. You. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Now, uh, joining us from Nairobi, Kenya, is Debbie Siaraba, uh, who is uh, of the Africa um, Green Revolution Forum. Uh, Thank you for your time. Welcome uh, to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, right beside him on that double screen, you have uh, Akitunde Oyebode, who is the Commissioner for Finance and Economic Development uh, in Ekiti State. He joins us uh, via Zoom from Adoikiti. Hi, thank you for joining us. Happy Independence Anniversary. Wish you the same. Uh, hi, everyone, and happy birthday in areas from you. Thank you very All much. All right, we also have Chioma Agwebo, who is the founder Tech Ha in our Abuja studios. Uh, Chioma, hi. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Now, this panel, um, I'm not going to be talking, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be asking you any questions <laughs> about the past. Can I help you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to, I think, we, I, I think, well, at least for me, we're going to focus uh, on going on here forward. Yeah. Uh, let me start with you, Kule. Yeah. The most difficult thing that people talk about all the time is that we're, people, younger people are full of ideas. Uh, they believe everything can be done. But then there are some almost insurmountable obstacles in their way. If you as a practitioner, what would you say is the most important obstacle that stands in the way of any young person with an idea in Nigeria today? Um, I'll say training. I'll say education. I'll say capacity building. Um, because um, a lot of, I mean, the space is growing, especially now that we're having interest from a different part of the world. Um, recently, uh, Netflix just started Netflix Niger, and um, at the moment they've um, started doing Netflix original, like they've been doing in uh, develop. I mean, I mean other countries. And if we are to really grow, I mean, let's say for example they commission ten big original films, it would be difficult to have the right hands to take on those jobs, and this. I believe will, will discourage people or they will have to bring in experts from, you know, outside the country to get the job done. Uh, so on my part, um, I've been, of course, I've been trying to champion, um, you know, training, especially in, in my field. Um, and we're not, I'm not really talking acting. I'm talking uh, because in production space, you have 
like key, uh, like 20 key different um, areas, you know, that people can feel. And if you're, for example, in, in lighting, you have like five different departments on the lighting. On the camera, you have like five different departments on the camera. In sound, you have the field sound, you have the post-production sound. In post-production sound, you have like seven, eight different departments. Mm -hmm. You know, there's grip. In grip, you have two, like two, three different departments. On the art direction, you have makeup, you have costumes, you have um, set design, you have props. So, and if you look around, like if I'm shooting now, um, and there are one or two other uh, big projects going on, as a matter of fact, we used to wait. Normally, I'll wait for Pat Neville to finish on the project he's doing before I can start mine. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of youth out there who, are really, who really want to come into the field. Some of them have graduated from Harvard. They study law, but they just feel that creative okay. space yeah. is, is the place to be. Okay, let me come to you, Choma, uh, over there in Abuja. You've done a lot of work with women and tech. You're the founder, Tech Her. What are the core challenges you find in your area with young people, young women, getting into tech in the right positions? Thank you very much for that question. Um, there are a few challenges, and the first of them is um, what Mr. Kunle mentioned, but I think I'll come from another area, which is qualitative education. And this doesn't put the responsibility on the people who need to be educated, but on the government that's supposed to educate them. Um, so, for instance, Tekra has a project now called a school tour, and we're working with 10 local education authority schools in Abuja. Some of these schools, I think six or seven out of these schools, have never been connected to electricity. So how do you start to expose children to technology when they don't even have the concept of light bulbs? Um, and so we've had to produce playing cards. Um, and on these cards, because pretty much every family in Nigeria has played what at some point. So we've, you know, repurposed what cards, what playing cards, and we have some technology information on them. And when we go into the schools, the children are playing with the cards and then they're asking questions because of the you know, specific bits of information that are on the cards. So when you think about the fact that education is not qualitative, and then you think about the fact that um, from a baseline point of view, we have the highest out of school children in the world, standing at about 13 million. So, and you also have to think about the fact that 60% of this number are girls, because when there's a question about sending a child to school, the answer is almost always to send the boy rather than the girl. So we, we, we start out being pretty disadvantaged. And then, of course, you have quality issues. You have sexual and gender-based violence as evidenced, you know, um, not only by the real-life experiences of people told every day on the street, but, you know, um, documentaries like, um, you know, the Sex for Grades um, mm -hmm. championed by Kiki Modi and the BBC, um, BBC Africa I team. So there's, there's quite a few things. And then, you know, there's, there's stereotypes, there's culture. Why are you not, you know, trying to be a broadcaster, for instance, or a an air hostess or a public relations person or anything, why do you want to do technology? It's for boys. There's the stereotype of how, you know, tech people present. And so families don't want their daughters to look like that because there's some sort of notion. Finally, there's a security issue, right? If you look at, and I wish, you know, um, the, 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 sec the, the segment just before this one was open to the public because you, you had the security men talking about, you know, the challenges they face, but we didn't talk about security men being the problem for citizens, right? So there's an entire NSARS issue where young men with laptops in their bags are immediately branded criminals and they're beaten, they're extorted, even to the point where they're taken to ATM machines to, you know, to retrieve cash from their pockets and things like that. So th the problems are gargantuan um, um, in, in, in the way that they present. And, you know, it's kind of like one thing leading to the other. So these are a few of the challenges before we even start to think about the fact that you know, the, the market, is the market ready to absorb these women who have this training? Um, are there policies within workplaces that allow women to thrive? Let we me put you on pause, Chioma. I have to put you on pause, Chioma. technology business. I have to put you on pause, Chioma, because uh, I, I, I need to get uh, the views of DBC Araba, who is in Nairobi. Uh, DBC, your experience is a bit different because you operate outside uh, the Nigerian environment, but uh, you are very passionate about uh, Nigeria and what can be done uh, at this end. What, what is it that your experience has shown you as different from what uh, Kunle uh, and Chioma's experience is? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ladi. Uh, to, to 
reiterate, uh, happy Independence Day, Nigeria and Nigerians. It's 60 years. Uh, we have growing pains. Um, people might assume, you know, a 60-year-old country is an old country, but relatively speaking, a 60-year-old country is very young uh, compared with other uh, countries around the world. Now, um, uh, what, what, what Kunle and, and Choma have said, I completely, you know, resonate with me, um, you know, but when we look at challenges, we also want to look at opportunities. Um, I also wanted to touch a little bit on what was mentioned uh, in an earlier segment by Yoande Sadiku and uh, Bismarck Rawani. Uh, Yoande specifically talked about this enabling environment uh, for entrepreneurs to thrive. Um, I think this is something that we need to be very single-minded about. You know, as an economy, as a country, as a people, we need to be serious and focused on where we want to be and how we see ourselves. Um, I most recently, I, I started telling my friends that, you know, if you were a betting person, would you bet on yourself? If you were a betting person, would you bet on Nigeria? And I think we need to bet on Nigeria and we need to show this uh, through our investments. Now I lead uh, the HGRF, which is a platform of partners uh, all focused on agriculture transformation in Africa. Nigeria, of course, is one of our key core partners. We can't talk about uh, the future of agriculture uh, in the world, really, uh, without talking about Nigeria. Nigeria has the potential, and we've been saying that for decades. Um, as some people famously say, you know, you don't eat potential. You really need to see that conversion. Just as Yoande mentioned, you know, you need to see the conver uh, conversion of interest into action. Um, and we're starting to see the green shoots, you know. Um, just giving you a, a couple of examples. Uh, uh, a young guy, uh, Rotimi Alawale of JR Farms, a uh, very enterprising entrepreneur uh, who has uh, investments in Nigeria, Rwanda, and Zambia, uh, agri, agri business investment. So Nigeria is taking that know how uh, across the continent. We also, of course, uh, in, in Kaduna, we have Tomato Joss um, with, uh, uh, with Mira Meta leading that. Uh, earlier this year, she closed a Series A funding uh, to the tune of $4.2 million, I believe, um, uh, to transform. Uh, the tomato uh, producing and processing sector. Uh, of course, we also then have uh, in agribusiness, um, we have Afyong Williams uh, with Real Fruit, who started uh, with processing um, uh, uh, fruits, uh, mangoes, um, but she's also diversified now. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I follow the journey, the entrepreneurship journey of these businesses, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm encouraged. You know, I, I, feel, I feel like the, the journey of Nigeria has just but we really need to create that enabling environment. Indeed. And so indeed I think the do. next phase indeed of, do, of innovation. Let me go to Akitunde uh, Oyebode in uh, uh, Ekiti, in Ekiti uh, where um, you, the difference, of course, for you, Akitunde, is that you are now uh, in the political field, uh, which is where many of the key decisions get taken that affect all these other sectors where Kunle uh, and DBC and others uh, are affected. Uh, what's your experience? Uh, I mean, I like to say I'm in governance, uh, first things first. Um, <laughs> but, but I think, I mean, I think I expressed that similar. Um, I think for me, it's really about human capitalization. You know, how do we capitalize talent? Um, and I think that's what we need across, across the panel. Um, ultimately, I feel that Nigeria is in a place where, you know, we need to leverage a lot more technology. Um, and this now speaks to, so everyone's talking about agriculture, et cetera, which is great, but I think that we now need to see how do we deepen uh, technology and its use across Nigerian businesses are exporting this technology. You know, Paystack is in Kenya, is in South Africa, I believe Flutterwave as well as in a number of countries. And right on cue, my internet connection is unstable. Um, and, I'm, and I'm speaking from a state capital. So it tells you, if I and Adwe Kitty, you know, will have this kind of challenges connecting to the internet, then you imagine what happens to the kid in my hometown in Kondi, you know, and how can kids in Kaura and Amoda, how can kids in all these parts of the country connect to what is increasingly becoming a very competitive uh, global economy? So for me, the real question is, how do we ensure our talent can compete globally with the rest of the world? Thank you. Indeed, uh, but for time, but for time, time, time. Um, I'm having to thank uh, you gentlemen uh, and lady uh, lady and gentlemen, for joining us. Um, uh, Chioma Agrebo uh, in Abuja, Akitude Oyebode in Ekiti, Debi Sierra in Nairobi, and of course, Kunle Afolayo here in our studios. Uh, 
we, we, we say thank you. And once again, happy independence anniversary. Thank you.